I'd like to uh, begin by digging in, if we can, to the question at hand, which is, should the West compromise over Ukraine? And it seems to me this question does cut to the heart of this debate. There's not much disagreement about whether we should compromise with Russia. As Anatole said, Western leaders have already offered to compromise with Russia on an array of different issues. The question is, should we compromise with Russia at Ukraine's expense? And this is where uh, I think the matter lies. Let me first, before turning to the specifics of Ukraine, though, uh, address the general question of NATO, since it is NATO uh, that is to a certain extent at stake here, although I also want to focus on the question of Ukrainian sovereignty and independence, which Anatole didn't touch on. Anatole suggested that NATO enlargement was a fateful error, quoting George Kennan. And when I look at Europe, I don't see the evidence of that. All NATO countries that I look at, from Poland to Romania to the Baltic states into the Balkans, are more peaceful than almost anyone would have expected they'd have been at the end of the Cold War when they were released from Soviet domination. And so rather than a fateful error, it seems to me that NATO enlargement has been an extraordinary success of European and American diplomacy. No one would have predicted in 1991 when the Cold War ended that Europe could be so straightforwardly pacified with uh, with only a couple of exceptions, democratic uh, governments united whole, uh, p whole at, at free and at peace. This is a great success story for Western diplomacy rather than a fateful error. The, the question, of course, today, though, is about NATO and Ukraine. And I think here a couple of data points are in order. The first is to say that Ukraine has no desire to be part of a Russian sphere of control or to return to the fold of the Russian Empire. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that he sees Ukraine and Russia as one people, but the Ukrainian populace doesn't agree. Opinion poll after opinion poll, election after election, Ukrainians want to be independent. Uh, the most recent polls from the respected Kiev Institute of Sociology find 88% of Ukrainians want independence from Russia, a majority want to join NATO, and that number has been increasing over time in all regions of the country, whether Ukrainian speaking or Russian speaking, the trend line is positive. A majority of Ukrainians also say Russia is a hostile state, 72% in the latest poll, and it's not uh, hard to understand why Ukrainians think that. For the past eight years, uh, Ukraine has faced uh, a set of types of pressure from Russia, economic pressure, diplomatic pressure, cyber attacks, and of course, most importantly, military pressure, be the Russian occupation of Ukraine's Crimea and the regular fighting that is taking place in the Donbass, which is occupied by Russian-backed, armed, and funded militias. If you listen to the Kremlin talk about the current crisis, a crisis that emerged because Russia decided to put over 100,000 troops on uh, its border with Ukraine, Russia describes the question of one of security guarantees. And the irony is that Russia thinks that it's the country that needs security guarantees. Russia, a country with one of the world's two largest nuclear arsenals, Russia, which has one of the world's three most powerful conventional militaries, thinks that it uh, is a country that needs security guarantees. Whereas when I look at European security, the country most at risk to me seems to be Ukraine, not Russia. And so the security guarantees that the Kremlin are looking for seem to be not really uh, based in fact, but based in something very different. Now, for the past uh, decade or so, the Kremlin has focused on uh, trying to bring Ukraine back into its orbit. There are lots of people who regret the collapse of the Soviet Union, lots of people in Moscow who think that reinvigorating Russian imperial control over Eastern Europe would be a good thing for Russia. And they've had some successes uh, in recent years, but they've had some failures too, which is that the Ukrainians, as well as other people on their border, don't want to join them. And so Russia's had to find ways, new stories to invent, uh, to justify its increasingly aggressive policies to these countries. You don't grab your neighbor's territory uh, as a way of achieving security against them. Uh, yet that is, that's exactly what Russia has done. The reality is that what we're talking about here is not primarily Russia's security. If you had as many nuclear missiles as Russia does, missiles that are launched from planes, that are uh, launched from ICBMs on uh, spread across Russia's territory from submarines that are impervious to Russian, to, to, I'm sorry, to NATO attack, you wouldn't feel insecure. And I think it's implausible that uh, the Kremlin seriously feels threatened by NATO forces, which anyway are only a tiny fraction of what they were during the peak 
of the Cold War. It's Russia, not the United States or NATO, that's been building up its military forces in Europe. Since 2008, Russia's launched an extraordinary military modernization that's been very successful, as we've seen on battlefields like in Syria. It's Russia that's rolled out a set of new hypersonic missiles that has the most advanced hypersonic missile program of any country in the world. And so when I hear Russians talking about insecurity, I struggle to understand what reality this is based on. Every military analyst that looks at the military balance thinks that it's shifted substantially in Russia's favor over the past couple of years. I think Anatole exaggerates when he says that NATO would struggle to defend borders in Eastern Europe, but there's a grain of truth there, which is that Russia is substantially stronger today in pure military terms than it was a decade ago which again makes Russia's demands for security seem even more puzzling to me. In fact, I think when Russia talks about security, what it really means is sovereignty. It doesn't like the fact that Ukraine wants to be an independent country. Last summer in June, President Putin published a very high profile article still published uh, on the Kremlin's website, which argued that, quote, you Ukraine can only have true sovereignty in partnership with Russia. That's what this is about. Should Ukraine be sovereign or should it be a second tier state answering to the Kremlin's whim? And so when I think about compromising with Russia in the current crisis, I say, yes, absolutely. Let's find ways to compromise with Russia in the ways that Western leaders have already proposed. But if it comes to compromising Ukraine's sovereignty, I say no, Ukraine's sovereignty doesn't threaten Russia. Russia's military is stronger than it's been in the past 30 years. And when Russia talks about security, what it means is domination. That's something we simply should not accept.